This video is about quantitatively evaluating point estimates from forecasts using R. And we're going to start off where we left off from the last lesson. So uh, I've already executed all of this code from the last lesson that loads the packages, loads the data, splits it into training and testing sets, fits a model and a forecast to the training data, uh, and then plots uh, that data for visual evaluation. And quantitative evaluations of forecasts, point estimates, generally are quantitative evaluations of this last visualization that we made, which is this one-to-one -one plot relating the predicted values to the observed values. And there are then a variety of different measures that capture how far on average an observed value falls uh, from this predicted line. And we can get a number of the most commonly used measures uh, for how accurate a forecast is using the accuracy function from the forecast package, and it takes a forecast as its first argument, so that's the forecast that we fit to our training data, and then a set of test data to evaluate that forecast on, which for us is NVVI underscore test. And if we run this, we'll see uh, the output down here at the bottom. And it shows a variety of different measures of error related to uh, this forecast. And so this is the mean error, uh, the root mean squared error, the mean absolute error, the mean percentage error, and so on. Uh, two of the most commonly used error measures uh, for uh, forecast valuation are the root mean squared error. So that's the distance from this line, the difference between the observed and predicted values squared, and then take the average of those squared values and take the square root of it. So that's the same as the root mean squared error that we use for assessing other models. That's a standard uh, measurement of, of model fit. And also the Breyer score uh, is very commonly seen in statistics, and that's just the root mean squared error squared. The other thing that we see here is that we have error rates associated with both the training set and the test set. So the training set errors are errors within the training set itself. And the test set errors are the errors for the forecasts uh, made explicitly for the test data. And we can see that the errors on the test data are higher than the associated errors on the training data, which is a very common feature of model fitting and why we hold out data for testing in general, uh, because the models tend to overfit a little bit and so it looks like they're performing better than they actually are. And so uh, typically we want to have that separate chunk of test data, and those are the error rates that we actually want to interpret in terms of telling us how good our model is. So now let's pause for a second uh, and have you uh, try out the accuracy function on uh, the seasonal ARIMA model uh, that you built at the end of the last lesson, and then we'll get back together and compare them to one another. Welcome back. Uh, here's what I did for analyzing the seasonal ARIMA. I created a new model, which I call seasonal ARIMA model and I fit it using auto.arima on the NDVI training data. 
I then created a seasonal ARIMA forecast using the forecast function on the model we just made, seasonal underscore ARIMA underscore model, and forecast for 36 time steps like before. And then uh, we can check the accuracy of that new forecast using the accuracy function to look at seasonal uh, Rima forecast, right? That's the forecast that we use to make the predictions. And then NDVI test, uh, which is our test data. And we can see the results here. And if we make this a little bigger so that we can compare them to one another, we can see that on both the training set and the test set, our errors are lower for the seasonal ARIMA forecast than they were for the non-seasonal ARIMA forecast. And so it seems like the seasonal model is doing better uh, in terms of error rates uh, than the non-seasonal model. It's performing better from a quantitative perspective. And we can also see uh, that even the remaining autocorrelations indicated by uh, the autocorrelation function time step one here uh, are reduced in the seasonal model relative to the non-seasonal one. So that's the basic idea behind how to do quantitative comparisons of point estimates. They are very similar to other kinds of model performance comparisons. We're looking to see how far the observed values are away from those forecast by the model. There are a variety of different metrics that are used to determine that, with two of the most common in forecasting being the root mean squared error and the Breyer score, which is the root mean squared error squared. We can get a whole variety of different error metrics for our forecast using the accuracy function, which takes the forecast as the first argument and held out test data as the second argument and shows us the results for both the training data and the test data.